diving into the topic of visual storytelling and why it is increasingly becoming important in PR. I have a great lineup of industry experts today joining us for the discussion. And with that, I would like, just like to start with visual storytelling as a whole. So we have all heard of a saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. And I rightly believe so because visual content, when you look at it, it has a lot more to say and uh, to evoke emotions and tell a story that text alone, I feel cannot. And with this, that the PRs of today and even the social media marketers, I feel using visual content in their strategies and efforts is not just a important part of PR, but also a new whole, new whole necessity to take care of. And with that, I would like to start with my first question to explore this whole new ball game of PR. How does visual storytelling transform the way organization engage with their audiences? And if I can start with you, Mr. Abhishek. Certainly. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let's recall this. How, how many of you remember the last good article that you read? Uh, something that, uh, that strikes in your memory sharply that this article was very well written. Well, you might remember the reel that you've seen this morning. Why? Because visual impact makes better uh, reach to a consumer. It, uh, according to a study, it says that uh, almost 60% of uh, you know human memory w works on the visual communication, and re and they remember what and, and they remember what they see rather than they uh, speak or listen. So, for a uh, company to crack this code, I firmly believe uh, it should have three various factors: that is, increasing uh, shareability, evoking emotions, and uh, uh, aligning with their brand. Uh, so increasing shareability it is something you know which is becoming pretty common right right now how does it how does the brand cracks cracks it so uh, i believe that uh, when uh, brand stays true to its uh, course you know when they connect to the consumer uh, you know they they can have a uh, different ways of communication be it on testimonials or infographics or memes all sort of various contents visual contents that are going out how they utilize, how they package it to their sources is what uh, makes true to their uh, brand. Uh, evoking emotions. Emotions is a 24-7 game. It works uh, day and night. You know, uh, we see these famous YouTubers, what they do. They wake up, they brush their teeth, they go to the bathroom, and then they make videos. I mean, this is pretty normal, but people are engaging because they, they see themselves in that video. This is pretty normal video which is cracking million of views so why because people are connecting at a very different emotional level and uh, this is how i feel uh, a, a brand should always try to connect with human stories and evoke emotions very rightly said even if i would have to give an example very very basic one i'm going to read a newspaper and if it doesn't have pictures i would lose interest and Certainly, if there is a Delhi Times over there, and I would just grab it because it's very colorful and it has an appeal to it. So, yeah, so visual content is definitely the king nowadays. Ms. Purva, you would like to add? Um, yeah, I think uh, it's also important to call back to the fact that um, as an industry, we can trace roots to um, the birth or the invention of the printing press, right? And since then, storytelling has taken multiple forms. Um, at least in the last decade or so, products like TikTok have really changed the game. It has all become about very short form, snappy, visual content. Um, it adheres to the changing attention spans. And so we only have ultimately just one minute at most to hook, get, hook into people's uh, reality, conscience, and attention. Um, and so to, to, be, to be able to do that, you need a visual element because as, as a species, we react to that, right? Uh, we react to stories that, I think you were saying so, that it, it, they, they, something that touches your emotions, something that moves something within you. Um, and the first hook for that is what your eyes see and then what your ears hear and then what you sense. 
So just how the process of con consumption also is changing as mediums change. And as an industry, we are largely dependent on the mediums that we have to play with. Um, so just uh, it's, it's a product of changing tech tech. And now with the invention, I mean, intervention of AI, everything is at your fingertips. I can tell a whole story in just a generated picture. Yeah, you can create all the pictures that you want, like specific pictures that AI is doing wonders. Mr. Murtuza? So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I would just like to build on what Purva and Abhishek mentioned and Madhavi mentioned as well. Purva mentioned about uh, the first printing press. But let's go back in the history. Um, mankind has always used visual storytelling as part of human civilization. Um, you know, in terms of uh, people through ages have ensured that they communicate their ideas and they use visual storytelling as a medium to express their emotions. Now with the ad advent of technology, the scope has expanded. But if you see in terms of uh, people uh, uh, carving something in the stone to communicate idea, I'm talking about uh, going back in history and early civilization. So from that time to the first motion picture to now with the advent of AI and technology and how newsrooms have changed as well, it's a complete immersive and intriguing uh, kind of atmosphere which is created because our attention spans are uh, decreasing, are diminishing. The way we are consuming and the way information is thrown at us, it's very important in terms of, um, like Pura mentioned, that how these uh, short, snackable content are uh, created and consumed. So that gives an elevation to brand and gives an elevation to a brand story because uh, brands no longer, all of you are aware that brands no longer uh, sell their product. So it's about a human interest story. It's mainly having that emotional connect. And visual element, because we've been using that thing over the years, uh, helps us uh, to give that edge over others. And just lastly, building on what Madhavi said, that a picture is worth a thousand words. But a strong visual story is priceless. You know, because if I'm looking at a picture, if I, if I get connected with the emotion, the backstory that the picture holds, or for that matter, video, any kind of content, infographic, so on and so forth, uh, that that is priceless because that has an emotional connect with the brand and then eventually the entire buying pattern and uh, the entire marketing funnel changes. I would like to start with you only for the next question. So how do you think different industries can leverage visual storytelling to increase their impact? All right. So this is a very interesting question because um, the Dowdy Boras is a faith-based organization. So a lot of different industry uses because they want to sell a product, they want to create a brand. but for us, as a faith-based organization, we have different trusts. Uh, we have our volunteers across different parts of the world. So mainly for us, visual element is to connect with our stakeholder, uh, to create that emotional bond, and to convey the kind of values and teachings and the good practices that the community um, uh, you know, practices over the world. So for that, the, the uh, overall usage of uh, visual element changes especially when you're dealing with people and emotion. So faith-based organization like us, we have got uh, hundreds of uh, institutions in, uh, and, and trust in education, in healthcare, in housing, in environment. So we are dealing with people and their emotions. So when you're dealing with people, it's very important to understand their psyche. It's very important to narrate their story. So we empower our volunteers to narrate their story. We highlight their achievement. We highlight in terms of how they are making progress in their respective societies across the globe. So that visual element connects with our stakeholders. You know, so the kind of impression that we want to create, the uh, real, genuine, lasting impression, visual storytelling is uh, the best way uh, in terms of providing a medium for us to narrate our story. Thank you. Ms. Purva? Um, I'll give you an example, actually. So um, Alexa, the voice assistant that Amazon has, began as a voice-only assistant. Um, it had no screen. It was just a speaker. but because of uh, the general shift towards needing something ancillary, ancillary for your eyes. Even a product like Alexa had to come up with a screen device. And now every time you engage with the device, you, there is a screen and something flashes. And that is how people are engaging with it. They are paying more attention to an inanimate object at, at, at large. 
so different industries i think are taking on that element of visual storytelling and tiktok largely changed the game there because the product that they came up with of just an endless loop of it's a rabbit hole of video storytelling at the end of the day and now you have spotify coming into it youtube came into it instagram came into it so different platforms at large are now in integrating the visual element because everybody likes to tell their stories and everybody likes their stories to be engaging and so you need to just constantly keep evolving as per the interests of your consumer so visual storytelling um is integral to us as an industry but it's not an industry specific trait anymore it's pretty much agnostic all over right even podcasts are more and more you know getting video based now everybody wants to watch their uh, their clients and people they fantasy about so yeah would you like to add something mr abhishek so i'll add to what uh, murtaz has said so uh, when you see a nike brand you see you know they will play on their usp so the biggest factor over here is for an industry to carve out their niche and to be specific to their pr is to portray their usp uh, a cisco or a tcs would play with numbers and they present it uh, in a way you know which looks very easy in grasping or for for example a nike will portray their sports uh, athlete they uh, they'll promote a sports culture so uh, i strongly believe the usp is the key and you you need to drive your pr around it very right very right so um, again i'll start with you with the next thing uh, the next question i have what strategies can pr professionals use to leverage visual storytelling basically to foster a genuine connection with their audience okay uh sometime back uh, so this is related to a water crisis sometime back uh, hul did an advertisement i i i sure uh, pretty everybody remembers over here uh, that advertisement was pretty straight forward you can call it it a tvc you can call it a pr piece or you can call it a digital ad but whatever it was it it cracked the code so it talked about water crisis in a very smart way they showed a village wherein the villagers were que queuing up to a shower enclosure and a strong uh, text uh, ran on the, uh, ran on the screen that uh, the amount of water that is consumed by a city guy for a bath that whole vi village can you know fulfill the requirement with that um, the same amount of uh, water so uh, it is about communicating a parallel uh, communication wherein you are also talking you are taking a stance and you are also passing a message strongly so uh, uh, i think uh, what's trending in the market what's going in the geopolitics what is running in your uh, uh, you know in your numbers should be presented in such a way that it is very easy for the consumers to understand and it cu cut across uh, masses right right also i feel visual content has the power to complex down the text like if it's, it's a big text text to written down to understand the attention span our attention span is becoming so small that to break that code it's very tough but images for example infographics is a prime example it really helps to understand what's happening around and it's very important to get the right message across the audience so yeah miss purva would you like to add i think more than strategy i would say it's a change in approach and that is agility all across right um the moment you see something that is interesting Uh, to capture it in a way that you understand it and present it to the world is becoming more and more key so i'll give you another and that is what stays with people i'll give another actual example only uh, the life boy ad where uh, the first 5 years of a child are very very important the entire ad campaign what is stuck in your head is that sh long shot of that man walking on his uh, hands to a temple because his child has now lived up to 5 years uh those are the kind of images that really stay with you and maybe that idea was also born by some, from someone who saw this happen and that is where the idea then stemmed from and now has become such a big campaign so that agility of thought of hey this is interesting i'm just going to take a picture and push it out let's see what happens um that i think needs to be that is the next step for us yeah the content is becoming more and more shareable like it's in a click you can just share it mr murtaza So we all know as PR professional that uh, 
reputation and goodwill is the currency of PR, right? Now, if you understand the science behind visual uh, storytelling, it's that it evokes your uh, cognitive impact in a way that uh, if I look at like Purva mentioned about having strong visual that stays in your mind, if you look at a good compelling visual element, um, you know, you, it creates, um, so your brain generates dopamine, all right? It's known as a happy hormone. So when the brain generates this thing, um, you know, this hormone, um, our, the audience connects with that brand. So there is an emotional attachment to it. You know, so this particular emotional attachment, once you start feeling for that product or a brand or a story, then there is another hormone generated, which is oxytocin. Now this is an action hormone. Now this action hormone creates that call to action. So brands and PR professionals are utilizing this thing in a very smart way. And there's a science, like I mentioned, there's cognitive uh, um, impact that it creates. So, you know, A to uh, PR professionals are using it to communicate their ideas in nice, snackable content, something which is shareable, likable. Um, second, it creates that kind of connection and deepens engagement with the brand. And third, and the most important thing with most of the brands also look for is conversion. So that call to action process is very scientific in nature. So PR professionals are already doing that thing and organizations have realized the impact of uh, evoking um, you know, emotions and um, delving more into uh, the cognitive impact. And we are seeing that uh, change all across as well. So bringing this uh, to my last question, how can professions leverage visual storytelling and data together? All right, so like you mentioned, Madhavi, uh, we are thrown at, and we are living in an information explored uh, era, um, you know, and um, in this generation, people uh, wants to, uh, um, you know, in terms of they want to, they are a generation who does not want to see, but they want to feel, and therefore, if you see most of the uh, news channels, there's so much of data which is thrown at us recently, the entire uh, polling campaign that was covered, they used uh, AR in terms of just breaking down complex um, you know, insights and data and then presenting it in a different way. So nowadays if you see the entire newsroom is so lively, they transcend you to a different place altogether where actually that incident is happening. And recently I was just watching the flooding thing that happened in uh, Chennai. They actually took you to that place and they, they simulated this entire event so that it, it generates that kind of interest and curiosity as well. Similarly, if you see in terms of sports, um, they use these kind of uh, 3D uh, mapping and they'll use infographic and all those kind of elements which are introduced while the commentary is uh, um, going on. So that is how brands are breaking down these kind of complex data um, into uh, memorable and uh, lasting visual uh, elements. Very right, very right. Pur Ms. Purva? I'll again start with an example. So the New York Times did a story for the January 16th capital attack and it was a whole eight scroll microsite of sorts that was divided into an interactive timeline. So every time you scroll and you stop at a timeline spot, there are pictures to depict exactly what was happening at that time throughout the day. And that is how they relate the entire story, top to bottom, right from the beginning. And it, it got some million hits in uh, a couple of hours. So that was a great way of combining visual uh, elements with hard data. Now how that translates onto a platform like Instagram is you have a 10 part carousel which can all be a continuous element and you just keep swiping and you are looking at a timeline ultimately. So platforms are adapting uh, visual elements to convey data and as you said Madhvi, it does help demystify and simplify a lot of hard data. And that is where our job becomes important because then it's, a, it's, it, it's doubly important for us to be very sure of how we are understanding or interpreting data and then using our creativity to relate to an audience that may or may not understand that complexity. So that hitting that balance of employing the right kind of visual element to break down the relevant type of data is just more responsible for us. Yeah, very right. Even I, like, I have been doing PR for some time now. So, like, even my, uh, the stories of my clients are also, publications are now using those uh, big length articles into snippets of pictures and just a tagline with that. 
so it really helps even the audience of the client to understand okay what they want to tell what are they telling in short form they don't have time to read the entire thing and it won't it won't stick with them yeah mr abhishek uh, so back in 2012 2013 uh, uh, there's this YouTuber called Nas Daily. He makes uh, information video. He makes video about travel and histories, right? So he, uh, he was a very popular growing channel back then. And he met uh, Mr. Mark Zagapak. And he used to do a photo-based uh, content uh, throughout his various platforms. So uh, the conclusion of that meeting was any, anyhow, uh, Mr. Uh, Nusair, uh, as he's known, Nas Daily was doing pretty well on his uh, social media platforms, but the conclusion of this meeting was Zuckerberg categorically told him to trash all the photo uh, stories that he's, he's been doing right now because the data were not supporting. So how he transitioned, so uh, it is said that a human brain has an attention span of only eight seconds. And in eight seconds, how do you capture, uh, you know, uh, a human mind? Uh, you see the transition. Earlier, you used to see a, 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 a trailer of three minutes. It reduced down to two and a half minutes. It reduced down to one minute. Now you are seeing reels of the, those trailers of 10 seconds, 8 seconds. So this transition, you need to club your, uh, your style with the data that is being provided. Uh, ultimately, ultimately you, you are catering to a human mind which has an attention span of only eight seconds uh, yeah yeah so definitely um, visual content is now we all know how important and how fascinating it is to see the pictures and uh, relate to a story a narrative of a person or a company and uh, thank you so much all the panelists it was a great great session and I'm definitely going to take these insights back to my work and uh, as Professionals of the industry, it's our duty to keep up with the trends and um, this was something that is trending right now and I hope this has definitely addressed many questions that the professionals might have had. So thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.